guys, it's Phil from White Shore Chicago again, and I'm bringing you a deck profile. This time, we're going to be doing deck profile from the newly released Sword Art Online set. And, uh, well, it's a really unique set. Uh, so, um, today's profile will be on deck that I brought to a tournament last week. I think it was April 5th. And the, uh, did pretty well. Uh, I was able to place, what is this? I was able to make it to top six for sure. But I was, you know, eliminated due to, you know, weird format. And yeah, uh, let's get on with the deck profile. Profile will be on the less popular uh, red green deck so what I'm playing is Leafa control green for Leafa and red with random characters like Silica and uh, Lisbeth so let's get to it so first I run the one copy of the Leafa that saw what you did there you know cuz she's OP she saw what me what I did there and uh, no really her real name is uh, sharp eyes Leafa she gains a thousand during my turn if I have three more stock and you know this isn't really this isn't particularly useful but in the rare instance that I do have three or more stock she's a 35 beater so gotta burn her because she's lethal I run two copies of reliable guide Leafa uh, 2000 power and her ability is when she attacks once uh, she attacks, you can choose one of your other avatar net characters, which is everything in this deck. And you can give them a thousand power and a level. This might not seem like a lot at first, but the level part is the important part. So let's say you have your opponent decide to play a suicider at level zero. You play, you know, technically you could play this and, you know, for lows, play this and attack with this first. Whatever attack you choose. Then pump this by a thousand at level, and this goes into your opponent's low zero suicider, and they won't be able to do anything about it because it's level one, not low zero anymore, and they won't be able to free kill it. Um, unfortunately, the downside of this card is it does require you to overextend a little bit in the early game, which is you know when this card is most useful, but it also you know it's also not that great during the late game. But I just run it for the art awesome card next we have a copy of uh, Kendall girl Sugu uh, her ability is uh, brainstorm pay one and then you know mill top four cards of your deck every climax you hit she gains 3,000 power so you know this card alone seems stupid I mean why would anyone run this why would you want to pump this with a base power 25 by 3,000 well you pump you don't really use it for the pump you use it to go through the rest of your deck if you know that you've gone through the majority of your climaxes and you know that's just you know something you can do it's a what I would like to call a spammable brainstorm so you play it you spam and try to keep yourself from taking massive damage if you know all your climaxes are out next we have one copy of don't know her name, but she is the OP brainstorm. Uh, hmm. Silica straightforward trust. So this one, this brainstorm is actually pretty interesting. 2500 power, so the same as Sugu over here. But her ability is pay a stock cost of one, rest two of your characters with avatar and name, and then you mill the top four for every climax you Choose one character in your waiting room with avatar net or familiar trait, and you add to your hand. So, mad plusing possible with this card. Really interesting. The only downside is that it's a cost of two cards put to rest. Now, usually, uh, there's no big deal because you can usually have her sitting in the back row, put her with like maybe a support character over here, put them both to rest, and then you know pay the one, and then mill four, and possibly plus like a madman so that's that's just an idea something you can do 
But other than that, this is a really good card. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's Silica. She has to be good. So, yeah, there's that. And this serves another purpose in the deck. It gives you the advantage and cards, character cards that you need for many more abilities. So, let's move on. I play two copies of Kirito putting stuff on the battlefield. So this is 2500-00 standard searcher card. You pay a cost of one, discard a card from your hand, and then you search your deck for any avatar or net character and add to your hand. So it's, you know, staple <laughs> in almost every deck. I play two copies of Date Feeling Silica. So she is a 004000 beater character, which is really, you know, good. But the downside is her ability. Uh, at the beginning of the climax phase, you must check the top card of your deck. If it's a climax, she goes straight to rest. So, not that great. But there, there are a couple of, you know, uses for this card. Like in the early game, if you really need to beat down a character, you play her, and you know, swing away. But if you, you know, if you're lacking in power in the early game, this is basically what this card is for. Um, Green and red in the Sword Art Online set doesn't really have any power attack cards like Lion on the Sofa Asuna that you can just easily abuse. So this card is, you know, basically the next best thing if you want to run red green or any kind of green power card. I mean, this could count as a power card, but the requirements are way too heavy. So there's that. So those are basically power beat characters. And I play two copies of fresh out of the boat fresh out the boat get it no fresh out of the bath sugu so she's a 3000 power vanilla just player because she's suguha and you know beat her it's a vanilla doesn't do anything it's just there i play four copies of the lisbeth that saw what you did there haha -ha. So this is, no, her card name is actually Elizabeth Artesian's Pride. So her power is 1500. Uh, her first ability is that she's a low zero suicide. So whenever she battles a low zero and, you know, regardless of battle result, if it's low zero or lower, that other character will be reversed upon her being reversed. Um, and the second ability is the accelerate ability. You can put the top card of your deck to your clock at the beginning of your climax phase, then pump one of your characters by 2500 power for this turn. So, it's a useful tech, not only in the early game, but also in the late game. 2500 power, pretty good, but at the cost of one damage to you in the late game, maybe not so good. So there's that. Staples index are suiciders like these, so. I don't see how you could get by with not running them. Anyways, those are my level zeros. So let's move on to level ones. I start by playing. Um, trying to find the card name over here. I start by playing one, two, three copies of Suguha Complicated Feelings. So this card is your one one. Uh, character counter, 2,000 power. Um, your one of your characters is being front attacked. You can pay cost of one, discard this, and give one of your characters uh, who's being front attacked 2,000 more power. So there's not too much to say about this card. It's a standard. I mean, it's a standard counter, but because I'm playing red green, uh, you really have no other access to other counters in the deck. You know that goes syn that has synergy with the deck. I play it because one, it's a green card, and two, it's a counter. So it's kind of a requirement. You can splash. Uh, counters don't have a require color requirement to be played from your hand, but generally, if you want, if you have this card in your level zone or your clock, it'll count as green. Whereas if you play the other character counter that's 1 0 Asuna, uh, it's the same effect for zero cost. But she's yellow, and you, you know, you don't really use yellow in this deck. I also play it because it's Sugu. 
Come on. Oh, let's see. I play one, two, three copies of the Embarrassed Leafa. I don't think I have her card name on here, but that's okay. So this Leafa is basically your 5500 power vanilla. 1-0, 5500. Nothing much to say. I play her because she's Leafa. Thank goodness they made vanilla for her and not Oberon, like the trolls that they are. I play one, two, three copies of your 1-0-4500 Suguha. This is Suguha Complicated Feelings, I think. No, Suguha Wavering Feelings. All right. So, the first ability is a passive 500 to all of your other characters. Or, no... Yeah, all of your other characters gain 500 power on both turns. And then the second ability is the Climax combo. So when the Climax... Uh, hmm, I can't even remember what the Climax name is. Hidden Feelings. Hidden Feelings is played into a Climax zone. You pay the cost of 1 from her. And then you all of your characters gain 1500 power until the end of the turn. So this is one of those explosive cards. That makes green red so dangerous. Red offers your control, and green can offer the power bump when necessary. So, let's say you had two of these in the back. If you play Hidden Feelings, you activate the ability of both of them, paying two stock, and you know basically giving everybody three thousand power plus the one thousand bonus from the climax. If you give everyone four thousand power, that is really hard to count. Hmm. It is really hard to come back from and really hard to counter. It's especially dangerous in the mid to late game. Yeah, mid to late game. Because, you know, mid game, if you have a bunch of level zeros, level ones, let's say level one power is uh, 5,500. Let's say I pump this by 4,000. No, even if I pump this by 15 plus, you know, let's say I only have one of these out. I pumped her by 15 plus the 1,000, so she is 65 plus 15, so she's 8K. Let's say I had three of these. 8K front attack, really pretty big. The standard counter at uh, level 1 is 2,000 power. If your opponent's character is not at least 6K, this attack is going through. So, this card, at first, when I looked at it and saw in the character uh, card previews I was like eh, this card's like uh, seems so bad because there's this card in uh, the fate zero extra booster or whatever booster it was uh, the Kotomine Kire he has you know he gives a thousand to all of your characters during the opponent's turn which is you know much burn you know he has more power than this but then I looked at this climax combo tested it it is really good and the other thing is, you're going to be getting this off consistently because your Climax combo, the Climax is a gold bar, which means when you trigger it, the Climax will automatically go to your hand and then you put something to stock. So, chances of getting this off are pretty high. It's really good now that I've tested it plenty of times. I play two copies of Self Girl Leafa. So, her first of so she's 1 0, 4500 power. And her first ability is Hand Encore, so if I need to Encore her, discard a character card instead of paying stock cost of 3. Her second ability is uh, Rest to your Avatar or Net characters, and she gains 2500 power for this turn. Uh, I would run more of her, but her low base power is 4500. It's really low. I mean, there's Hand Encore to make up for that shortcoming, but it's really low. Um... Even with the 25 pump, she'll go up to, what, like, uh, 7k? 7k without any supports is, mm, it's okay, but generally on the defensive, this card's going to be costing me more cards than it's worth, so there's that. And then I play one, two, whoa, Earthquake. Stupid earthquake. Three 
copies of uh, my math's crooked. I played three copies of uh, Lisbeth in the middle of changing. So this super sexy card is awesome. And uh, she's 1-0, 4,500 power base, but for every other avatar net character, she gains 500 power. So she, if you have a full field, she's essentially 65 for zero cost. Which is pretty good. 6,500 power. Your opponent's probably going to have a little bit of a struggle going over that. But uh, it also requires an overextension. But if you know what you're doing, it's not really overextension. And you can control the pace of the game at will with this card. Really good card. And come on. The art is to die for. Alright, so now we're going to move on to level 2 characters. I start with two copies of uh, School Uniform Sugu. So her first ability is that if I have three or more characters, including herself, well, three or more characters in general, so she counts as part of that requirement, uh, three or more characters with Avatar Net, she gains a uh, character Encore, which is Hand Encore. So discard a card from your hand to Encore her. Uh, if I'll discard a character card from your hand to encore her if she is reversed. Same ability is what I like to call a battle enabler. So when she is attacking, you can pay the cost of one, and if you do, she gains 2500 power for the turn. Her base power is 7500. 2 1, 7500. Nah, it's okay. Mainly because, you know, she has character encore and the battle enabler ability, which is play. Uh, when she attacks, you pay the cost and of one and you know, twenty five hundred more power. Battle enablers are things, you know, you use them to get climaxes out of your stock in case you trigger them mid step and you don't want them there. So, there's that, and it's the twenty five hundred power bump. Mm, it's okay. Play because she's suk. I like to. Play one copy of Healing Spell. So there's a 2 1 event. So the first ability is you can look at the top two cards of your opponent's deck and you choose up to one of them and you put it to the bottom of the deck. And then afterwards, you put the other card back on top and then you choose one of your characters and it gains 3000 power. The reason why I emphasize the up to one part is because you can choose zero if you decide to look at the top two and it's like, oh, uh, they're both character cards and you want to deal two damage, that's how you do it. And the 3000 pump is, you know, pretty, pretty big. Combined with the one zero Sukuha wavering feelings, this, you know, one of your characters is not going to be countered. It will go through at all costs. So yeah. Pretty efficient 2 1 event. I only play one because it's, you know, sometimes it's a dead draw when you need a character. Because there's a lot of character encore characters in here. So, yeah. I play one, two, three copies of uh, hmm. this Lisbeth. She's, uh, let's figure out what her name is. I know I've written it down. The fuck that is not Lisbeth. Hmm. Where the fuck this? Whatever. I don't know what her name is, but she is the two one. Now I really want to find out. The fuck. Not Elizabeth changing. Screw it. I'm eating time on the video. So, this is the 2 1 8000 power double R Elizabeth. Double R? What the hell? Whatever. The point is uh, so her ability is uh, pay one if she's attacking and the climax the, uh, seeked warmth is in the climax zone. You can pay the cost of one. And then you salvage two characters from your waiting room. Salvage two characters, discard one card from your hand, and then she gains a thousand. So, this card is 
really freaking awesome. So, oh, when you uh, attack with it, first of all, it's a climax enabler. So if you check the climax, you can get out of the stock. And another thing is, it's <laughs> it's what I would like to call a climax increaser. So what you do is uh, you establish two characters essentially for free. Get that climax out of stock. Discard any climaxes in your hand, and then you just you know you just improved your dex compression rate by such a huge amount. This card is way too good. <laughs> if you get the climax combo off, which is Seek to Warp is a gate trigger, which is a uh, you know basically salvage. So you attacked with this, check Seek to Warp while Seek to Warp was in play. You get rid of that Seek to Warp, salvage two, discard one climax, and you just got all of your climaxes out, and you plus two, you know basically plus one. Really freaking good card. Too bad it's a double R. I don't think I've seen many of these being pulled, but she's also not worth a lot on the uh, online. So, moving on. Play one of Lisbeth. Uh, take the private blacksmith. Hmm. Just like Phil to not be... Oh, Lisbeth determined to propose. So this is your 2-1 X support. So... Level 2, 1 cost, 4,000 power. Uh, she's going to be in the back. So her ability is support. The character in front of this gains power time. Power plus X. X is 500 times the level of your character. So at max, 1,500 support. Second ability is when she comes into play. Pay a cost of 2. Salvage any character in your way room and add to your hand. So this card is insanely good tech. If you've been saving your stock... And you know, you can basically toolbox your way. So red here, as we've seen from the last two cards, offers so many toolboxing options, while green offers power and control. So this card is really good. Mm. DSP looks pretty good too, but I don't have it. So now we're gonna move on to the end game, your level threes. So I start with three copies of Little Sister Existence Silica. So when she, so she's level three, two cost, ten thousand power standard. So when she comes into play, you can choose the top card of your uh, clock and send it to weight room. So basically a heal on play. The second ability is a really good one. So when she attacks with the climax, Pina's resurrection in play, you can choose up to one card in your weight room, add to your hand. Choose up to one card in your opponent's weight room and put it on top of their deck. So. In case you didn't get that, this is essentially double insurance. So the first one is, you know, you're putting a card that you know back on top of your opponent's deck. So you're somehow able to deal the opponent one damage and they're at level three and six cards in clock. You basically won the game. And if they don't, and let's say you overshot and dealt two damage and they cancel, you still got a character card to combat them next turn. So basically this is double insurance. The two... The uh, Climax, Pina's Resurrection, is a 2k1, 2,000 power, 1 soul to 1 character, and you draw 1 card. So this is basically, in general, plus 2, well, plus 1, because you play the Climax, the minus 1, and then you, uh, it's a break even. It's a break even. No, it's a plus 1. You're playing 1 card that you know back on top of your opponent's deck, it's gone. That card's going to be going either in clock or the way room because it's going to be, you know. It's basically a finisher. And there's a neat little trick you can do with this. So let's say you play this this turn. And then you, uh, let's say these are in the way room. These are in the way room. So you play this this turn, you heal the card. Then you play your Climax of Awesomeness. Uh, attack with her get her back and the next turn if they kill this sure no big deal you just play it again heal and then if you had you're lucky enough to draw the climax again you do it again add this back to your hand and it's basically an infinite loop if you have the stock and the uh and the uh climaxes for it but yeah it's essentially a 
infinite loop. Or as uh, most players would like to call it, a heal loop. Two here, two here. And then I play three copies of Pure Wish Leafa. So this is my favorite card. I will need triple R versions of these if you guys have them. Send me a message. And yeah. So, uh, 3-2, 10,000 power base. So her first ability is that if the number of cards in your deck are 5 or less, she loses a level in your hand. So she's essentially level 2. That's not the uh, good thing. Second ability. While she is on the field, all of your other avatar net characters, which is everything in this deck, gains 1,500 power. 1,500 power. So that's essentially an X support to every other character on your stage. And if you were lucky enough to have an X support in front of that, you know, let's say you had her on the field, Leafa's on the field, well, only one because your opponent's a good player, and then you had an X support. This is essentially getting 3k bump permanently on both turns. So, <laughs> love, uh, love awesome stuff with that. And the third ability is probably my most favorite of all. So her third ability is an action ability. Pay one, discard, pay a stat cost of one, discard a avatar net character from your hand, which is everything in this deck. And then she gains 3,000 power and the ability that she cannot be targeted by the effects of your opponent's cards. She's basically invincible on your opponent's turn if you do this last effect. So let's look at this. So she's going to be 10,000 base plus the 15 from this so it's 11.5 plus you know 3,000 power from her act ability so what's that come out to guys 14.5 do you know of any characters that can reach 14,500 power easily without expending a lot of resources I certainly don't so yeah this card is essentially saying if I use my act ability with this behind or let's say I had another one on the field and I used the act ability. You're not getting over this without a hell lot of so for a super ultimate side attack of maybe one damage or without spending a hell lot of resources trying to kill this. So, this card, really freaking good. Uh, she's a double R and I only have three. So I'm looking for a fourth one. So yeah, guys, send them this way if you have them. And we'll go into a climaxes. First, I start with three copies of uh, Hidden Feelings. So there's your gold bar green uh, Suguha climax. You know, that scene in the anime where you know she found out Kirito was her brother. Spoiler alert. And yeah, uh, it's a gold bar. So if you check it on the drive check, yes, look at that totally unrelated sleeve. Check it on the drive check. It's a gold bar. You add to your hand and put the top card of your deck in the stock. So you're essentially guaranteeing the climax combo if your Suguha Wavering Feelings is on the field. So there's that. Three copies. Then I play two copies of uh, Pina's Resurrection. So this is your red climax 2k1, 2000 power, one soul to a character on play. And then uh, you draw one card. So this is basically a power over climax. Why else would you give 2,000 power to one character? And then last of all, your three copies of Seek to Warmth. This is your red gate climax. 1,001 so on play. But when checked on the drive check, you give uh, you search your waiting room for one character. Add to your hand. No questions asked. And, you know, this goes with the Climax combo with that 2-1 double R Lisbeth. Where you can salvage two, discard one card from your hand, and then everything, and then your character gains a thousand. So, there's that. And that, guys, is my Sword Art Online Neo Standard Red Green Leafa Control. So, yeah. Red, green, leaf of control, pretty good. Got me into the top six at our local tournament a week ago. And, you know, awesome unrelated sleeves.
So now uh, we're proceeding into the last part of the video, which is mailing. So this deck is essentially going to be unusable because I'm going to be giving a shout out to you, Genji. Thank you, good sir. You are a very good man. I'm going to be, uh, this video is just for you. So this is going to be partially the deck video and partially a uh, trade uh, mailing confirmation video. So let's move that aside. This is the envelope I will be sending in. I will not turn over the other side because I want you people to see our private information and whatnot. So let's uh, take out the cards that we agreed to in the deal. So from my deck, I will be trading the two copies of this 2-1 double R Lisbeth right here. And then as, a, as promised, the two gold bags. So I'll be sending this out right uh, today uh, these points I don't know if you can see them they expire in uh, February of 2015 so use them by 2015 you've got what is it now 2013 so you've got about two years to use these so start by unsleeving these sorry if I'm handling the cards a little bit rough I'm trying to be as gentle as I can so those are two cards out of my deck and this is why I will be sending it. I don't have any top loaders, so I will be stuffing the two two one double R Lisbeths into the same uh, sleeve. Don't worry, because this sleeve is like a double wide. It's red for you know the deck you're probably trying to build red. So here you go. Gonna put the two two one Lisbeths right next to each other, snug and tight. And then here's an over sleeve for this. So I'm going to package it like so. So, I'll package it right here. Nice and tight, right? And then uh, I'm going to stuff the two go bags back here on the back of the sleeve. Again, I'm sorry, I don't have a top loader or, or like a spare second sleeve. Otherwise, you know, I totally use those instead of this. Now, let me see if I can find the opening. Okay, found the opening. I'm gonna stick these two in here, like so. And then I'm going to put this into the envelope, right? So two go bags. Let me triple check and make sure that was, you know, the trade. What I'm saying on my side, two go bags and two two one double R Elizabeths. So let's see. And triple checking it now. It is indeed two go backs and two two one double R Lisbeths in the trade deal from my side. So here you go. This is going into a bubble layered bag. So see, bubbles, bubble wrap. Gonna be safe, hopefully. It'll go right there. Gonna peel off the adhesive, exposing the adhesive, pulling this over, fold it up nice and tight. Mm. It's a bit of an old envelope, but yeah, there you go. And this will be mailed with confirmation and tracking. I will be PMing you the tracking soon. And uh, thank you a lot for the trade. Send this away. And uh, yeah. That will be the end of my uh, Sora Online uh, Neo Standard Red Green Leafa Control. Comment, rate, subscribe. Hope to see you again. And yeah, this is Phil from Whitesworth, Chicago. Sign off. Bye.